here's a woman standing there in front of me, and she is, uh, there's something tied around her neck, and it looked like a bra tied around her neck, or something, well, my, my thought was it was a bra, but she was standing there, and uh, I thought, and her breasts were exposed, and there was, so I didn't, but that's the first thing I noticed, just that she's standing there, and, and, and sort of this, you know, undress kind of, and I thought, oh my God, they're having kinky sex, and I just kicked her door in. That was my first. Thought. That was the first thought. I, like, holy shit, what have you done? And and so I, I. But then it was it was sort of this, this Hitchcock moment where all of a sudden all the details came to me, and I realized that she had blood. She had blood on her mouth. And this thing around her neck was very, very tight, and she was clawing at it. And I realized, holy shit! And then, and then this thing happened because I I went into some other realm in my mind. And just a little pre-story: my baby sister was at Florida State, and it was her twentieth birthday. And there was a a guy in the stairwell who brutally raped her and nearly murdered her, strangled her, left her for dead. And that had been about six months before. So from that point on, all of a sudden when I realized what was happening to this woman in front of me, I started calling her my sister's name. I started calling her Patty. And, and I said, you're okay, Patty. I started, I started doing this really gentle talk. You're okay, Patty. It's okay. I remember talking to her like that. I think Ellen remembers that too. And I took her in my arms. And I, I, I brought her, and I was still, like, talking really gently to her on the one hand. On the other hand, what was going on for me was that I put her down in the hallway. She said, no, 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 don't leave me, don't leave me. He's still in there. I said, no, no, it's okay, Patty, I'll be right back. And I turned, and I felt something I've never felt since, and I hope I never feel it again. I had never felt it before. It was I, I wanted to kill whoever was in there, and I mean kill. I wanted to kill. I, I remember thinking I was gonna, I was gonna squash his head on the floor like a melon. That's what I wanted to do. And you know, I was a young man. I worked out a lot back then, so I must have been kind of an imposing figure because I, 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 I got to the the doorway and I looked down this long hallway, and there's this guy backed up against the window, and I'll, I, I'll never. This is a moment. Even when I talk about it all these years later, I still get a weird thing up my spine because I, I looked him right in the eye. And the, and the light from the hall, it was dark inside, and the light from the hallway illuminated him and was caught in his eyes. I, I would never forget those eyes. I still don't. As long as I've lived, I've never forgotten. And I ran in screaming at the top of my lungs, I'm going to kill you, you fucking son of a bitch. I remember yelling and going at, going like full, full on down, down the hallway. Mm -hmm. And he turned and jumped out the window. And, you know, it's a, there was a courtyard there of these buildings of like shared this common space down there in total darkness. He jumped over the, the fire escape. And I got to the window just as his leg was going through. And I, I think I even touched his pant leg. I dreamed about it for years after that I was able to grab that leg and pull him in. And, but I didn't. And, but he, he jumped out the window and I went to go after him. And I swear to God, it was like something like pulled me back. Like there was a big hand, like slapped me on the side and said, stop, you know, stop. And I stood at the window and I said, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you, you know, like screaming. Lights started coming on, apartments all around and everything. And then I, I turned back and I, I got Ellen and I lifted her off the floor and I took her down to uh, my ex-wife's apartment. I laid her in the bed and I said, I'll be right back. And meanwhile, you know, we, we decided not to say her name because we didn't get permission to say her name. But my ex-wife says, you know, she's looking at me like, what the what, what is going on, you know? And and, and I, I went outside, I ran downstairs, I went around the block, and I got to, like, you know, around one part of, the, you know, around the block to the opposite side of the block, and there was this guy in a car, he was parked right at the intersection, kind of like in the crosswalk, mm -hmm. in what was not a parking space, mm -hmm. and he looked at me, and I looked at him, and this is another moment where 
I knew it was him, but for some reason, I doubted it or something. I don't know what, but I, there was something inside me that said, that's the guy again. And we made eye contact yet again. Mm-hmm. And he took his elbow and he locked the door and pulled off and went off into traffic. And, and I remember that it wasn't, I remembered then that it, it, you know, the color of the car, and I tried to remember the license plate, but it was like I was too jacked up, you know, to stay calm enough to remember. But I remembered it was out of, out of I think it was a New York license plate is what I remembered. And um, anyway, so that was, that was how, how it went right up to that point. And then I think, Ellen, you want to take it from there? Yeah, I will. So, um, needless to say, I was so traumatized. Um, I managed to hang on for about a month, and then I moved back to New York to be with my parents. Um, we, we had a pretty sweet, and I don't know how much you remember of this, Bob, but um, that, last, that last day before I left San Francisco, we went up to the Marin Headlands, and my Scottish grandmother, who actually plays a bit of a part in, in the reunion, um, she came, and um, and Bob's ex-wife, and Bob and I, and I had taken a picture of the three of them, so Bob and his ex-wife, and my nana, um, just with the Marine Headlands, um, you know, in the background, and the Golden Gate Bridge, and then I left San Francisco, and I went back to New York, I lived there for about uh, seven months, and then I, I felt like, okay, I can't live in my parents' house forever, so I moved to Las Vegas to be with my sister, who lived there, and it was there that looking through the LA Times about 14 months later that I saw a picture of Richard Ramirez, also known as the Night Stalker, with his head completely bandaged, so it was just his face that could be seen. And something in me just said, that's him. That is him. I had not followed that story. I didn't want to know anything about murders or rapes or anything. So I was totally out of any kind of, you know, crime uh, story. And so when I saw his face, I, I just knew it was him. And I called, um, I, I actually had a lawyer at the time, and I called her and I said, it's him. I know that it's Richard Ramirez that attacked me in my apartment. And so she said, call the San Francisco police. And I did, and I let them know that, you know, I, I wanted to see him in a lineup because I'd be able to ID him, mm-hmm. not even by the way he looked, but by his voice. Mm-hmm. And so um, I called Bob. I let him know that this was going to happen. And very soon after that, he got a call from the San Francisco police asking him to come down and also do a video lineup in San Francisco. So I was down in Las Vegas. He was in San Francisco. We both were able to ID Ramirez, absolutely 100%, no doubt whatsoever. The detective that was on that case said to me, and this is in Las Vegas, he said, "Um, you're really lucky that he attacked you when he did. He he hadn't gotten quite quite as bad as he he ended up getting. Mm -hmm. And so somehow I was supposed to feel lucky that, you know, I was attacked first or before he got really bad. Um, and there's a follow-up to that that um, I probably should tell you now. Um, two years ago, I found out that the night after I was attacked, mm-hmm. within two miles of my apartment, his first murder victim was a little girl. Mm. So it was the very night after he attacked me, he went out and he found this little girl and he raped and murdered her. Mm. And so when I found that out, and that was only two years ago that I found that out. And when I found that out, I, I was devastated because it, it meant that he actually, he was already that bad. And, you know, for, for me, I mean, I... I can't help but think that that little girl suffered what I would have. Um, So so that is what happened. He was already that bad. I knew how evil he was, and I knew that he wanted to kill me that night. I I could feel that. He was enraged that I had fought back. Um, When uh, when I finished with the police, with the lineup, I remember the police saying to me, I wouldn't get your hopes up too high because um, 
at that point, there were so many murders that he had committed in the L.A. area that San Francisco probably wasn't going to pursue anything. That it wasn't, I don't know, the expense or whatever it happened to be, so that it wasn't likely that anything was ever going to come of it. And for me, I, I didn't care at that point. I just wanted to be done with what had happened to me. And knowing that he was the one that, that, that did attack me, it almost kind of put some sort of closure to it because I knew now he was at least in jail. And that was a comfort to me. I didn't follow that story. After I did that ID, that was it. That's all I had to do with that. Um, until many years later, when Bill and I, uh, sorry, not the, Bob, sorry, when Bob and I uh, reunited. Bob, am I forgetting um, something yeah, well, about me? You know, no, no, I, I just want to say that um, I, I want to take it from the point where uh, you called me. Well, first of all, um, that after that night, three days later, um, my ex-wife's apartment, while she was at work, was burglarized, and you know the window smashed in the in the middle of the day. Somebody came in and did that, and you know we always wondered like what the hell, like was that the same person? Because the guy, whoever did this to Ellen, what well, all we knew is that he would have gone up the fire escape and looked in and seen us on the bed, me and and my ex-wife and having dinner and he continued on to an easier target, he would have known that I was the one who chased him off and came in, uh -huh. you know, running into the apartment. He would have known that he had just seen me down there. So he came, I, we, I believe, like, you know, whoever it was came back. And and when I went in to, um, to do the lineup, it's kind of a, you know, it's a weird thing. If I, I, I always thought of lineups as, you know, a lot like a motley crew of different people with different looks and, you know, and it was anything but that. It was every, there was, well, I don't know, eight, seven, eight, nine, I, I forget how many. There was a lot. And um, they all had exactly the same coloring, the same haircut, the same clothes, the same bill. It was very odd. And, but I went in and it was a little cubicle with this, because uh, I think there was more than one person looking at this that day when I went into the police department to do it. And um, they, um, I, I walked in and it was on the screen and I, I walked up and I said, that's him. I mean, I looked at him and it was like I hair up on the back of my head, that moment all over again. And uh, the, the, the officer, Falzone, was right behind. He says, oh, you know, hold your horses, cowboy. You got to... You got to watch the whole thing. You know, I said, okay, okay. But I, I watched the whole thing, and, and you know, it was just, it was, there was no doubt in my mind. When he came forward, I mean, it was very weird. Like, they had each of the people say, shut up, bitch. Where's the money? I mean, they turn their head. Where's the jewelry? It was very surreal. And, and but there was no doubt in my mind that that was the guy. When it was all over, I said, no, that's him. I'm 100% certain. And I remember thinking I, I would never like allow the you know the time to pass and think well was that really the guy i remember telling myself at that moment no that's the guy you know it and that that that's how i and that went down but um the the police said at that time said look um you know they, they're the ones who brought up the break-in three days later that they believed he had also done that and they they wanted me to look at um, some things that he had in his possession because he stole he stole all you know and I gave my my ex wife some really nice jewelry and all of it was gone and um, all the good stuff and he even she she was slightly disa disabled from having had polio she had she had, to have these boots made that were outrageously expensive and uh, because her 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 legs were different sizes. Her, her foot was one foot was smaller than the other, and he stole those boots. And it was very weird that he stole those boots, yeah. but he did. Okay. And and um, so they had they had me look at these possessions, and there was two items that were less valuable pieces of jewelry that I had given her. And um, we we both just, we both said no, we don't want to. I, I said no, I recognize that and that, and we don't want to touch those things. You can't throw them away. We don't want them. 
Uh, but I thought that was really odd that this guy came back and he was probably looking to get Isabella, actually, and find her alone during the day. So, um, yeah, and so then, then from there, the sands of time. Oh, yeah, the sands of time. <laughs> How much time do we have? Do we still have a few minutes? <laughs> oh, yeah, we're good, we're good. Time. Okay. Okay. So, um, so Bob, do this you? Is the, to... This is the no. This is the point in the movie where the like the the uh, calendar pages go the pages flying by. Go by. by. You know, we just lost track of each other, and it's one of those things. And then, and then, but I never, I, I, I never forgot Ellen. Like I always had this thing, and she would enter into my mind all the time. And it was, I don't know what it was like. We were, we had this weird connection. I, I, and all my friends knew, but I, I started looking for her and I couldn't find her. And I tried hard. I, I tried everything I knew. And I the only thing I knew was her, you know, her first and last name. And she had moved to Vegas. She was in Vegas with her sister, right? And that's the last I heard. And then we just, I, I just couldn't find her. And all my friends knew that I was looking for her. So I guess, we'll, should I, all right, we'll move forward to, um, it's a, a rainy day in Kauai. Okay. And I'm 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 laying in bed. The rain is pouring. There's nothing to do. And I'm watching the news. And I'm watching Brett Kavanaugh getting, you know, nominated for the Supreme Court. And I'm just my head is ready to blow off my shoulders. I was so fucking pissed off watching that. Listen to that. I well, I won't go on and on. But anyway. But I could go on and on. Let me tell you, I could go this on. This is and the on. podcast just, for that, Bob. You just start okay. going on and that on. Fucking uh, cowardly we'll little, it. Let it out. that little goofing weenie, there you, go. you know, talking about this his history of assault and the way he treated women. And I, so I'm on the phone with a, one of my best friends is a PhD psychologist, and I'm on the phone with her, and I said, you know. I said, this pisses me off so much, listening to this asshole. They're even, that he's going to get on the Supreme Court. I said, all I think about is, Pete, you know, like, what do women who have actually been assaulted? You know, my, my sister. I said, and I even said, and I said, and Ellen, I think about what, what is Ellen thinking when she looks at this right now? Now, I haven't, I haven't seen Ellen for 30 years. And, but I thought, of, that's how much I thought about it. And my friend Phyllis, the doctor, says, she says, you know, I, have, you still haven't found her? And I said, no, I haven't. And she says, well, have you tried Googling her? Mm -hmm. And I just like, well, of course I tried to Google